Hi, it's Scott here again, and uh, I've just downloaded the latest experimental release of Kerbal Space Program, my favourite uh, sandbox rocketry explosion pyrotechnic simulator game. The, the cool thing they've added in this release is the moon, spelled M-U-N, which is a an airless body about uh, 11,000 kilometres away from the planet Kerth. So, um... I'm going to try and get there. Now, uh, I took my usual rocket. Um, I added a little more in terms of uh, solid rocket boosters. Adjusted the staging a little so that it would have uh, an extra boost for a bit longer. Hopefully that should give me a little spare fuel, a little more spare fuel by the time I get to orbit. I'm kind of running through the launch sequence at about four times normal speed because otherwise this video would really take too long. But uh, the main thing is we're going to act like we're trying to get into orbit, but instead of uh, slowing, of um, stopping the engines when we get to orbital altitudes, we're going to burn and keep burning until our pe um, Apple key reaches about 11,000 kilometers. The altitude of, of the moon's orbit, but uh, the moon is moving and actually targeting the moon itself is going to be a tricky problem. Um, also, when you're launching now, the planet Kerth is rotating, and it rotates towards the east. And uh, if you know how to use the artificial horizon, it's a really good idea to try and launch towards the east, start your orbit in that direction, because then you can take advantage of the extra rotation of the planet. Um, I, if you look in, on Earth, most rockets actually do this as well. They'll launch eastwards so that they take advantage of a few hundred extra meters per second um, velocity from rotation. Uh, the only people that don't do this are the Israelis, because if they were to launch to the east, they would be launching over Iran, so instead they launch their satellites to the west, over the Mediterranean. Anyway, so I've, I've accelerated this thing up to orbital speed, and using time skip, you, you know, this is the third or fourth time um, the thing goes up and uh, keeps on missing the moon. But uh, eventually, you get lucky and you have a close approach with the moon and the orbits change. So you end up trying to do an orbital insertion. Basically, you look for the um, peri-moon, peri I guess is the term. And hopefully the peri-moon isn't inside the moon. That will probably happen. But I was actually quite lucky. My first um, close approach basically gave me a, a 300 kilometer altitude and I just uh, chose to burn at the right time to slow myself down. And so that's what I'm trying to do here, trying to adjust my orbit so that uh, everything looks cool and puts me into a nice, uh, nice orbit. Yeah, oddly enough, around the poles. I never intended that. That was just completely random the way things worked. But uh, yeah, polar orbit around the moon. So you can see the... Um, as I thrust, uh, do a retro thrust, my uh, apple moon drops, and eventually I'm gonna drop it until I'm in a reasonable orbit. And there we go, a few seconds later, time skipping forwards again through the magic of video editing. My altitude is now under a couple of hundred kilometers, and uh, I still have about a, a quarter of a fuel tank left. Um, so once I get a nice orbit, I'm just going to shut down the the rockets and uh, chill and enjoy the sights up here for a while. Um, with that amount of fuel, I'm not even going to attempt a landing because, uh, well, it would be kind of hard to balance that candle on its tail. And without the atmosphere, I would need a lot more fuel to do aerobraking. Um one of the nice things is that the altitude and velocity now are calculated relative to the surface of the body or nearest. So you see that the lunar orbital velocity is about 500 meters per second, which is, you know, less than a, a quarter of uh, what you would have if you were orbiting the Earth. Now, after spending a bit of time here, I decide that I want to go home. So I basically light up my uh, rocket, trying to burn it, uh, try to increase the eccentricity of my orbit again so that uh, I can escape the, the moon's gravity. You can see here it getting increasingly eccentric and I, when I'm far enough away I turn it off and that gives me some time. I coast out. Um, I've only picked up a couple of hundred meters per second but you can see that it puts me in a very very eccentric orbit. The way it works is there's only one, the orbit is only computed relative to one of the 
um, gravitational bodies and it's based upon the one that you're closest to or the one which has the strongest gravitational influence I guess um, there's no transitional zones here what happens is you basically get far enough away and boom it changes to the the other body so now I've now escaped the moon I can now accelerate time again and uh, try to make myself return to the planet. So my plan here is I'm just going to let this thing orbit around until I get back to Apple Key and then I'll do a retro burn that will drop my power key to the planet. So let's see what happens here. Um, time skip, time skip. You can go quite fast now. It, I mean, I really want to get to the Apple Key to maximize the efficiency of my deorbit maneuver. I mean, basically, getting back to the planet is a whole lot easier than getting to the moon. The moon, right now, there's not really instrumentation, so unless you decide to go out and hand calculate the differences in times and, and guesstimate angles, then there's really no way to guarantee that you're going to intercept the moon. But anyway, so I line myself up for a retro burn. Um, I do notice that the surface speed does look a little strange here but uh yeah i point myself at the retro vector uh get myself as stable as possible because i'm going to be using the map screen to try and con you know adjust for when my burn should cut out um but once stabilized put a little bit of thrust on and head over to the map screen and decide to see how quickly my apple key oh wait no my power apps is actually rising hold on panic stop so the reason i figured this out is that the surface speed is actually taking account of the rotation of the planet. And because we are so far away from the planet, the planet actually appears to be rotating backwards or whatever. I mean, you know, we are beyond geostationary orbit, so it looks to the planet as if we are moving thousands of miles per hour. So uh, I flip the thing around just so that I get my orientation in space. Really what we need is a... Um, instrumentation which is um, in orbit can be measured relative to the actual static planet that would be it would be nice to go back to that but anyway you line up the reverse thrust or it looks like a direct thrust and uh, that should at least give us the deorbit burn that we actually need and uh, yeah with a bit of practice a bit of time sure enough we're coming back to the planet Whew. Um, and then the only question is, I'm getting very low on fuel, and I'm not sure that I'm going to get it low enough. But uh, as it turns out, I have budgeted wisely and been very careful with my fuel use. And sure enough, the altitude gets to uh, just inside the atmosphere, and I, I still have a little bit of fuel left if I want. There we go, 65. See, at that point, now that we're inside the atmosphere, whatever we do, we will eventually come home, even if we run out of fuel now. So these guys are going to be safe. Yay! So that means they can get home and download the next version of Kerbal Space Pro Program when it appears. Um, the only other thing I've noticed new in this release, I guess, is the ability to have different command modules. You can... Build your, you know, have custom command modules and build those. Uh, make that the core item. Um, I guess that's going to be, you know, they're they're a special part, I guess, and so they need a special dialogue for that. But yeah, falling back to the planet, I just need to uh, get myself, you know, separate the stage, deploy the parachute, land. You've seen all this before, and uh, these guys come back as our heroes. And uh, maybe I will do some math and actually figure out exactly what angle you want your uh, lunar burn to be at. But uh, really right now, just thrust up to the altitude and uh, time skip, time skip until you get something where the, the moon just happens to line up with you. But until the next time, you guys fly safe or uh, fly dangerously because apparently Jeb likes it either way. See ya.